गुड मॉर्निंग डियर लर्नर्स माई सेल्फ ज्ञान प्रकाश यादव एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर स्कूल ऑफ मैनेजमेंट स्टडीज यूपी राजर्षि टंडन ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी प्रयागराज इन द सीरीज ऑफ लेक्चर्स आई एम ह्यूर प्रेजेंट अगेन विथ अ न्यू टॉपिक दैट इज इन द कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ ह्यूमन रिसोर्स मैनेजमेंट सब्जेक्ट इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर आई डिस्कस विद द human resource management the functions and the principles and other aspects of human resource management in the practices of human resource management the first and foremost practice is procurement practices this is very important and very crucial practice because we are hiring the manpower for the organization we are looking the most suitable employees for the organization because the highly experienced and qualified mind power can ensure the growth and development of the organization so first of all uh, we will talk about the procurement and in the procurement practices there are few sub functions they are the man for planning recruitment and selection so first of all i am going to start with the man for planning what is the man for planning why it is required for the organization we are looking in the function of procurement we are looking to acquire to hire the man power because of they will can a better in a better man power or the experience or the skilled man power can ensure the growth and development of the organization that's why in the man power planning once we are going to plan about the man power then the objective of ours is to hire a most qualified and experienced knowledgeable man power for the organization if we talk about the mind power planning so we can say the mind power planning is the development of strategies to match the supply of mind power to the availability of jobs at organizational regional or national level so the mind power is the mind power planning is development of strategies we are going to develop the strategies that how we can hire how we can hire the employees for the organization and to match the supply of man power to the availability of jobs how much jobs are available in the labor market or in the organization and what is the supply against those it's a very important and we are going to develop the strategy for this this is the man power planning so mind power planning involves reviewing current mind power for resources what are the exact position of the current mind power position we are reviewing forecasting future requirements what will be the future requirement of the mind power and the accordingly what will be the availability how much the mind power will be available in the labor market and taking the steps to ensure that the supply of people and skill meets demand so we are going to take the steps that the supply of people and skill meets the demand what is the demand of of the organization and how it will be meet by the mind power supply the mind power planning in terms of human resource development in we talk if we talk about in the terms of human resource development so we can say the skills knowledge and capacities of all human beings actually are potentially available for economic and social development in the country in the terms of human resource we only talk about the knowledge skill talent capacity of such type of inherent qualities of any man power or human being so the man power planning in the terms of the human resource development if we are talking in the terms of human resource development then we talk about that how much knowledge skill and talent capacity are available and what is the demand of the in the organization 
mind power planning refers to optimal use of human resources very simply we can say the mind power planning is refers mind power planning refers to optimal use of human resources we are looking for the optimal use of human resources and that can be ensured by the mind power planning it is a procedure used in organizations to balance future requirements for all levels of employees with the availability of such employees so it is a pro procedure used in organizations mind power planning is a procedure which is used in the organizations to balance future requirements to balance future requirements what will be the future requirements at all level of the organization it's not only in the top level or in the lower level or in the middle level but at the all levels of the organization of employee with the availability of such employees and what will be the availability of such employees the next we'll talk about the process of mind power planning what is the process how we made the plan about the mind power so that is the process of mind power planning in the process of mind power planning there are three steps who consists the mind power planning the first one that is the forecasting demand we forecast the demand what will be the demand in the future for the organization or for the country as a, if we are making the mind power planning for a country or if we are making the planning for the organization so we will forecast the demand of the organization so what is the situation according that we made the the forecasting of the demand what will be the demand in the next in, in coming years 10 or 5 years so what will be the demand of the mind power then after the analyzing human resource supply this is the second step and then matching human resource requirement with availability the detail of these uh, steps in the forecasting of the demand estimating the demand of man for man power is the starting point of a fairly elaborate methodology associated with human resource planning so estimating the demand for man power in the starting point of a fairly elaborate methodology associated with human resource planning the man power planning which is related with the human resource plan planning so this is a starting point first of all we are estimating the demand in the organizations even everything is fixed that the which employee will be retired at which date this is also known to us but if we are going for the expansion of the organization so what will be the requirement of that time so considering these factors we forecast the demand of the man power analyzing human resource supply what will be the supply of human resources we analyze this one the human resource demand for an organization can be drawn from existing human resources in the organization and the external market it is a general practice that the search for human resources starts from within the organization so first of all we analyze what will be the supply of human resources may be possible we have some demand in the future we are forecasting some demand but if we are analyzing what will the about the human resource so we can found that or the, the supply of man power is provided by the organization itself there are few workers few employees they can fulfill that position so we analyze and that's why it is called that the this is a general practice that search for human resources starts from within the organization first of all we search in the organization whether they are able to fulfill the those needs or they can match with that requirement so we starts in the organization third one that is the matching human resource requirements with availability how much the human resources are matched with the requirement we have some requirement and we have also some human resources but how they are matching with that availability if the available human resources are matching with our needs or with our requirements so we can use them 
but if they are not matching their skill in the in the sense of this skill in knowledge in the experience if they are not matching so we will go for the another sources this is a uh, third step that is matching the human sources with the requirements so we could talk about the recruitment exactly what the term is so we can say the recruitment is the process of actively seeking out finding and hiring candidates for a specific position or job the recruitment definition includes the entire hiring process from inception to the individual recruits integration into the company means what is the recruitment if we talk about the meaning of this so the term recruitment is a positive process of searching for prospective employees and stimulating them to apply for the jobs in the organization this is a positive process in which we are searching the prospective employees there are search that this may be our prospective employee there are in the labor market there are so many people with the different caliber different skill different knowledge different talent but who will be the prospective employee of the organization so first of all we are searching those people and stimulating them to apply for the jobs in the organization and then once we are identifying we are able to identify this could be the prospective employee then we stimulate them to apply for the or, for the job in the organization when more persons apply for jobs then there will be a scope for recruiting better persons if the more persons are applying then there will be scope for recruiting better persons but if there are not more people only few are there in the organization and we are in the need of the man power so we have to choose in those limited resources or limited people there are one two or three people so we have to choose in these three so it is possible that we will not get the best employee for the organization who can who will be uh, matching with the organization mostly so the purpose of the recruitment process is stimulating the employees or the prospective employees to apply because if we are making a big pool there are so many applicants having the different knowledge skill experience and then we are going to choose out of the those so we will choose the most suitable or the most qualified employee for the organization if we talk about the definition of admin we fill up the management thinker then he told that it is a process of searching for prospective employees and stimulating and encouraging them to apply for jobs in an organization so simply this is definition that the process of searching the prospective employees and stimulating them to apply for, for the jobs in the organization in the words of dale yodor recruitment is the process to discover the sources of man power to meet the requirements of the staffing schedule and to employ effective measures for attracting that man power in adequate number to facilitate effective selection of an effective working force so in the order in the terms of order we are identifying the sources of man power from where we can recruit the man power from where we will we will get the man power so identifying the sources and then we start the our staffing schedule what is the staffing schedule where after what will be happen so in the staffing schedule for the staffing schedule it's a very important to identify the sources of man power then the effective imply effective measures for attracting the man power so ultimately we can say that it is often termed positive in that it stimulates people to apply for jobs to increase the hiring ratio as a number of applicants for a job the purpose of such type of practices is 
to in enhance or increase the hiring ratio. If the hiring ratio will be high, means the number of applicants will be more. So it is very uh, easy for us to recruit the best employees for the organization who will be most qualified, who will be most knowledgeable, they, have, they will have uh, much experience, so they can provide the better results in the organization. The next step that is that is the process of recruitment, how we are going to complete this recruitment process. So in this one, the first step is searching out the sources from where required persons will be available for recruitment. After deciding the manpower planning, so we go for the search of the sources from where the required person will be available for recruitment. If young managers are to be recruited, then institutions imparting instructions in business administration will be the best sources. Everyone needs the young employees. India is the country, the specific situation with the India is that we have the youngest population in the world. And if the young managers are recruited, definitely they can provide the better results. They are energetic, they are innovative, they have the different, so many different qualities. On the basis of that, they can provide the better results. So, in the recruitment process, anyone employer or the organization tries that the employer should be young. It should be uh, energetic. So the second step, that is the developing the techniques to attract the suitable candidates. If we have identified the sources of the recruitment, from where we will get the manpower, we, once we have identified, then we have to develop the techniques to attract the suitable candidates. This is very important that how you can attract those manpower who are very good, who are very important or who could be the, your prospective employee. So the goodwill and reputation of an organization in the market may be one method. If a very reputed institution is there, a very reputed organization is in the labor market, so the employees will be attracted by the goodwill of the organization and the reputation, if the organization is very reputed, we are hiring for the Noratna or the other companies, so the employee will be very happy or he will feel some comfort that, or he will enjoy that he is going to be associated with a very reputed organization. So the technique that how you can attract, so the reputation is a very important aspect that you can attract the employees. The publicity about the company being a professional employer may also assist in stimulating candidates to apply. Publicity, how much you are publishing your, the, the organization or how much this is in the eyes of the candidates. It is possible that you are a very good, your, uh, your products are very good, your policy may be very good, but your publicity, you are lagging with the publicity the most of the employees, most of the people, they don't know about the organization. So in that case, he will not be very much motivated. So it's very important that you have a publicity, you have made, you should have uh, a publicity that can att attract the employees for the organization. Using of good techniques to attract prospective employees, there may be offers to attractive salaries, proper facilities for development, etc. What will be the good techniques? Once you develop, but in the good techniques, what will be? There will be uh, attractive salary packages. If you are providing the very attractive salary packages, then employee will be attracted for your organization. They are getting the better facilities for development. If they, the employee think that if he is joining, if he is associated with uh, such organization, then the, his development will be very good. So then he will be attracted with the organization. The next stage in this process is to stimulate as many candidates as possible to apply for jobs. In order to select a best person, there is a need to attract more candidates. The next stage that 
we try to stimulate more and more people to apply for the job which can provide you a better situation better position in which you can choose the best employees and they can provide the better results factors influencing recruitment what are the factors who influence the recruitment first one that is the size of the enterprise what is the size of enterprise it's a very important if the organization size is very big then the in uh, recruitment process will be different if it is a very small organization it's a very small enterprise then the recruitment will be different employment conditions what are the employment conditions it's a tough it's a hard it's a easy it's a comfortable so there are different conditions of employment conditions according to that the recruitment policy are determined and the recruitment be different salary structure this is also a very important factor who affect the recruitment if the salary structure is very good so employees will be attracted much more but the salary structure is some poor so there will be a negative impact on the recruitment of the that organization working conditions they are also very important once employee is associated with the organization so he looks for the working condition whether they are good or bad if the working conditions are good then he can perform better so he will feel comfort in this situation if the working conditions are better then he would like to prefer in such organization and the recruitment will be affected rate of growth if the growth rate is high i am joining as a position or any individual is joining but the growth of the organization is much more that he can grow in his career so he will prefer that organization but if in another side or in another hand if there is another organization where there is no growth in the organization he is joining as a manager but he is retiring as a manager so he would not like to prefer in that organization so rate of growth it's also very important and it's affect the recruitment then last one that is the sources of recruitment it's a very important from where you are going to recruit the employees you have made the policy you had uh, attract the employees from where you will get that is also very important that is the sources of recruitment there are generally two types of sources the first one that is the internal sources and the second one that is external sources in the internal sources we'll talk about the present permanent employees the present permanent employees are the internal sources the employee who is working in any position is a permanent employee and there are some higher positions recruitment there are some higher position vacancy so this employee if this employee is competent to handle this situation or to handle that job responsibilities so this is the best source the internal source the present permanent employee he may be promoted or he may be recruited for that post because he knows about the everything of the organization he is well aware about the environment of the organization so the present permanent employee is the uh, internal source by which we, we can go for the recruitment present temporary or casual employee these employees are also well aware of the culture of the organization they are also working with the their colleagues their fellow workers they are also aware of the policies rules regulation everything and they are also well aware so if they are able or they are fulfilling the requirement of the post as for in concern or as the concern in the knowledge and skill in the terms of knowledge and skill experience or the qualifications so they may be also a rich source for the organization that you can go for the recruitment of the present temporary or casual employees because they are known with the organization retrenched or retired employees retrenched are those employees who were retrenched by the organization due to some reasons maybe there was not no uh, need of such employees or few units were not working an employer was not able to provide them job so they were retrenched or some other reasons are there means they are now they are not the part of the organization but earlier 
they was the employee of the organization so they may be called back if there is not any serious issue so they may be called or retired employees who were also the part of the organization but now they are retired if their health issues are quite uh, well so they may also call for the recruitment process they may also be recruited for the organization the dis dependents or disease or disabled employees the dependents of the employees are also very important source and they are the internal source because in the family if the employee is working so the their family members are well aware about the environment and culture of the organization so they are also the known they know the culture of the organization they know the things about the organization so they may also be used as the resource as the source of internal source the dependents are our disease are also the internal sources from where we can recruit the people from where we can choose the employees the external sources these sources are also very important and in the recruitment policy or in the manpower planning in the policy it is very important that once you are going you are making the recruitment policy so 100% should not be selected by the internal sources few of the employees should be definitely selected from the external sources and few you can select in the by the internal sources so in the external sources the campus recruitment campus recruitment where the young graduates or fresh graduates or professionals they are studying they are getting the knowledge and skill you can choose this source for the recruitment because they are very young and energetic you can mold them according to the needs of the organization so the campus recruitment is a external source which is used by the organization private employment agencies there are a number of private employment agencies who are providing the data of the employees there are so many unemployed peoples or few employed are also even registered with them because they are looking to enrich their career and most of them are unemployed they are looking for the job so a private agencies can provide you a number of employees who can fulfill your needs they will be the according to your needs in the in terms of uh, experience or knowledge public employment exchange this is uh, basically this is governed by the government public exchange there are so many peoples there are so many peoples who are registered in the ex uh, employment exchange from there you can also get the recruitment professional associations there are professional associations and the members of these bodies are very professional they have the very good skill knowledge and the competency and you have a choice that you can go for the professional associations and you can choose as a source of the recruitment try by this one data bank there are data bank and most of the organizations had their data bank from where you can get the employees or you can use as external source in the recruitment process casual applicants there are few casual applicants who either they are working or they had given their application if there is any requirement they are ready to work so you can also or any one can use this source as external source for the recruitment similar organizations similar organizations have the same work if any uh, tire industry uh, is there so there are other tire industries you can choose the employees or you can set, recruit the employees from that organizations this is a, a beneficial situation because the work nature will be mostly same most in the most of the terms they, they are in the same work so you can choose for the similar organizations they are the external sources but they can provide you the better employees the trade unions they are also the external sources trade union members 
basically uh, they are the employees of the organization and they have the uh, big trade unions have the diff, uh, uh, members from the different organizations so by the members of the trade unions we can go for the recruitment this is external sources because in the trade union the members are from the different organizations having a different knowledge skill and capability so we can use as external source of the trade unions so this is the basically recruitment and in the procurement practices the first step that is recruitment in the recruitment we stimulate the employee to apply for a particular job the purpose of our this stimulating process is we are looking a pool where there are a lot of people a lot of graduates post graduates professionals having a different knowledge skill and talent they may apply there and we can choose the best or the most suitable candidates in the process of selection that is the next step and i will discuss about the selection in next lecture so this was from my side for the recruitment process uh, about the recruitment in the procurement practices so thank you thanks to all you for listening me i will talk about the selection in the next lecture thank you